First of all, congratulations on your book. Being Thank the you. New York Times bestseller. So you wrote about 1950s uh, Washington, D.C. This is a thriller. This is about uh, politicians. This is about the swamp and corruption. Uh, it, I would have thought that if you wrote a book, you would maybe try to escape from what you talk about every day. But it seemed like <laughs> you, uh, you, took a, you escaped went, via a cul-de-sac. I went right back <laughs> yeah. into the swamp. Yeah, no, it, it was ex exciting. And I could write about Washington today in a way by looking at it in 1954. And the basic premise is a, a young congressman and his wife go down to Washington, try to do good, and they get swept away in this conspiracy. But what was fun was writing about actual figures, mm. uh, John F. Kennedy as a senator and Joe McCarthy, and putting them in the book, having them be characters. And have you gotten good feedback from people who obviously still live in that world today? Um, there's a one Republican uh, congressional aide who reached out to me and said that it seemed like I was trying to get some things off my chest, <laughs> yeah. which I thought was funny. Because, there, because there, there is a lot of, you know, they say history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes. And when you read about Joe McCarthy and you study about Joe McCarthy, there's a lot of rhyming. Yes. You hear a lot of rhyming. This guy who was larger than life and very popular with the base of his party and smeared a lot of people and lied all the time, and Washington just didn't know what to do, and reporters and members of the Senate didn't know what to do. And we also look back, I think there's a tendency to look back in the 50s as like this real apple pie era yeah. of America, but there was a, it was as, not maybe as much, but there was, it was rife with corruption. Yeah, then it, was, as well. it was hard. I mean, first of all, and if you're a white man, it was probably pretty good. But, yeah. but for everybody who wasn't a white man, it was awful. But then even beyond that, the 50s, it, yeah, in pop culture, it's idyllic, it's, it's, it's serene, it's benign. But like in truth, there was the Red Scare, there was McCarthyism, there were actual communists infiltrating the government, there was the atomic race. It was horrible. So that's, I thought it would be fun to write because on the surface, it's, you know, it's all Sinatra and Jack Kennedy, but really underneath it all, it's McCarthyism and, and real menace. Uh, I want to ask you about this because you obviously, you write a book, you go out, you do press about your book, uh, but well, because of everything else you do, I, you know I'm going to ask you other questions. I'm sure. going to ask you about your show on Sunday, I'm going to ask you about uh, other people you've interviewed. Have you been surprised, because someone else who's doing press right now is, is uh, President Bill Clinton, Yeah. and he seems very caught off guard when he is also asked about uh, specifically the Me Too movement. Have you been surprised Stunned. at his failure to predict that those questions were coming? I, I, first of all, I know some of the people on that team, uh, and I'm sure that they tried to prepare him, but I've been amazed at how poorly he's handled these questions. I mean, a lot of them you could have anticipated. Uh, the world has changed in just the last year. It was, I mean, I think, um, I mean, who was, the Emmy, who was the Tony's host a year ago? Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a year ago. So, and, uh, so right. I thought again. he should have done it again. I... <laughs> I thought he was great. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just the, yeah, the world has telling. changed, so you have to adapt. And I would think he would have had automatic answers for, do you owe Monica Linsky an apology? What do you make of the Me Too movement? What do you make of this individual case, Harvey Weinstein, whoever? And, boy, some of the answers have been just... You couldn't... If you wanted to write the worst answer he could give, yeah. it is almost as if that one he did today about... Uh, whether or not you can grope people. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> people have different rules today about where you're allowed to talk, uh, to touch them on their bodies involuntarily. It but... was, yeah, it was uh, not well thought out. And then he said, and then he ended it with, you know, maybe I'm old fashioned. Not a good way to frame it, yeah. <laughs> I, I do want to ask about someone else who had a real moment in the Me Too uh, movement and uh, it was so tragic to lose it was Anthony Bourdain, yeah. uh, who was your colleague at CNN. Yeah. Um, I found it heartbreaking. Did you know him well? Uh, I knew him. I knew him uh, okay. I wasn't one of his closest uh, friends, but I knew him okay. And in fact, it was through the Me Too movement that he and I started talking a lot because he was so outraged. And and we had done a lot of coverage about Harvey Weinstein uh, last year, and he would reach out and we would talk a lot. And that's one of the things. It's it's such a loss. Um, for people who are inspired by him for any number of ways. He, his show is about the humanity of us all. It really was. Yeah. Um, but he really had, what I, the side I saw him that I loved was his passion, his righteous indignation against, in, in, indignation against injustice and uh, against all the people that let Harvey Weinstein get away with it for so long. And uh, it's not like there are a ton of people who have that righteous indignation, so the world is much poorer uh, for his having left. Yeah, he will really be missed. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. And thanks so much for being here. It's always just such a pleasure it's to see you, buddy. Congrats on the book.